I'm Zeke Hirsch uh, with Trout's Fly Fishing. I'm Tanner Smith with Trout's Fly Fishing as well. We're here on the Colorado River and we're going to talk a little about, re about reading the water and in approaching it with a drift boat as well as fishing it uh, from the front of a drift boat. Yes. And uh, yeah, I'm going to kind of go over what I'm looking at while I'm fishing the streamer. I got just like a articulated double hippie on there. Um, and while Zeke's kind of showing the line, I'll be kind of hitting pocket water along the way and kind of you can see our pace, our speed and stuff like that. We're in uh, September, early September, um, and we're running about 1260 at Catamount Bridge today on the Colorado River. Clarity is uh, kind of normal Colorado River color, a little bit of green to it, um, which is what I like. It doesn't, really don't want it super clear, um, although it does get a little clearer than this. Uh, it's great for uh, fooling the fish with some larger flies. What, uh... What's your general approach? Like, if we look at this run behind us, what's your general approach going to be? General, general approach is uh, always keeping my eye out for uh, for sleepers. We got one right here, a little rock there. So trying to stay either inside or outside, probably go outside of that guy, and then just slowly creep down this right bank if you're looking down river. Left side has some structure, but you can see a lot less current, a lot less water moving. Um, and in this particular situation, we actually want some current. Um, and it's still, if you were to look at it, a little bit differently it's still the inside kind of bend of this river a sort of slight bend um, you can also see a lot of different down that run there's a lot of different boulders poking up here and there so a lot of structure for those fish to hide out lots and lots of little current lines these fish like those little small current lines bringing them food uh, not working against that heavy current but having food delivered to them without having to work extremely hard um, they want to save those calories like how far are you keeping him away from the bank? Like what's your, what's your approach in terms of like getting in position to fish well? Yeah, I mean, um, for the most part, I want a comfortable cast from, you know, all my anglers. Obviously, you get a more extreme, uh, uh, experienced angler, uh, they can cast a lot farther. But usually, I'm going to be probably fishing about 30, 30 feet from the bank, something like that. Um, you know, again, varying that distance as far as if there's a better current moving along the bank or the current moves off the bank, I'll start moving off with it uh, and looking for how shallow that is too. Uh, always looking for color changes um, on the river. It's going to show you those ledges, those drop-offs, um, current lines, grass lines, always really looking for current lines yeah. or shade, color shades. So, I mean, while we bounce through this rock garden, there's going to be lots of quick little pockets. Um, just like Zeke mentioned, I'm looking for those color changes. So I'm trying to hit outside color change, first good strip right into that color change or right into that current drop, somewhere along those lines. Preferably, like if I'm in a current at the head of the bucket, I want my streamer to be ripping kind of downstream along the bank. These little pockets, you know, if you cast almost up onto the shore and then pull it right into the drop, you know, get two, three good strips there, pick it up, repeat. Most of those fish would be kind of like Zeke said, right at those color changes, right at current drops. And uh, I mean, They've been smacking the streamer pretty good and dry droppers in those zones today. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's been working, but yeah, that's kind of what I'm looking for. Quick, quick hitters, you know, short, quick casts, short, quick strips, boom, 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 cover a lot of water while Zeke kind of gets me, gets me on the line. Uh, what are you fishing today, Tanner? It's uh, Craven's Articulated Dirty Hippie. I think it's a brown trout color. Um, gosh, it's getting chomped up pretty good today, as you can see. I mean, yeah, we're fishing it and it's... What's your, uh, what's your rod Creating your, a lot of uh, action. Setup, or your leader setup? Uh, right now I'm fishing a 690 NRX Plus uh, with a fighting butt. Like that guy, I mean, it's great rod, great feel, loads us really nice. I'm fishing floating line um, with probably like a 10 foot leader. Uh, I'm not the biggest fan of like sink tips like some other guys are. I got split shot right above my streamer that helps me get down in the zones. Um, I think it gives me a little better control, especially when I'm kind of quick hitting spots, things along those lines. So I'd rather my streamer down in a hurry than my line in the zone before my streamer gets there, if that makes sense. So 1X Fluoro, Fluoro pretty much just a old crappy leader with seven feet of 1X tied off that down to the streamer. So. All right, we're going to navigate around this rock. so we don't get too close to the bank and spook these fish. Sometimes nice thing about rocks, 
in a drift boat, you can pull in behind them, catch a little eddy, especially if it's good holding water, and stall the boat a little bit. Oh, come on. Got some good structure on the right. Lots of little drop-offs, color changes, tops of rocks sticking out. Plenty of places where trout live. Yeah, as I'm working down, I'm just looking, like Zeke said, just color changes, fronts of rocks, edges of rocks, right at that drop. Kind of strip it out to this foam line, pick it up and throw it again. And if you noticed, I just was keeping the boat a little bit closer, making sure I was not getting pulled off of the bank too far to you know, get, make the caster cast too far, but also that makes it harder to fish. Especially the streamers, if you're casting way too far, you can't get the retrieves you like sometimes. Coming in this little like riffle bucket, right at this drop, we've been picking up a lot of trout. Come on, baby, you were in there. You in there. You not in there. Back up in there. And always watching, you can see the current pushing towards the bank. That'll push the boat to the bank. So trying to anticipate that and see that, read that water, so you're not getting pulled to the bank for your fishermen and spooking all the fish. So constantly keeping a, an eye down the river as well as the bank because you want to watch your fishermen turn a fish as you get to the end of a hole too that current starts picking up a little bit right here it can be a good area to find fish oh the pool, there was a flasher just a little misser kind of out a little bit swoop once we start getting out to like these tail outs i was probably Length of my cast, kind of give a slow retrieve through there, almost, you know, let the natural current pull that bad boy down. And should have stuck on this. And especially with streamers, as you're getting to the end of a hole, that water picks up right here. There can be fish in this tailing pocket, but also I'm moving to the bank so I can make sure my angler can hit all these pockets as the, as the water picks up to the next hole. So we're gonna hit all these pockets as we go down through here. Those pocket water sections, the fish don't have enough, as much time to look at your fly. It can be a very productive area to catch fish. Nice little pocket here on the right. Should be one right in there. There should be one. Dang, dang golly. And looking for those color changes in deep spot, deeper spots. There's a chaser. I had a miss with a chaser. A little grass line over there. It's a good little spot. I suck. Real surprising that he didn't get a follow out of there. Nice dark rock over there. A little current line moving next to it. Apologize for the quick interruption. If you guys are enjoying the video, please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, all that YouTube stuff. Uh, but without further ado, let's get back to the river with uh, the loudest man on earth, Tanner Smith, and uh, the oldest man on earth, Zeke Hirsch. Okay, we're gonna make our way to the left bank. Um, looks like a little better pocket holding water here. Oh! And uh, I'll miss one up there. Sometimes for streamer fishing, the fast water is some of the best. Yeah, lots of... Uh, go ahead. Oh. oh my God. Nice deep, deep looking pocket there. That was a, not a pickup, dude. Are you kidding me? This kind of water makes an oarsman work a little bit, but it means a fish. That's what we're doing it for, really. 
You can see all those little submerged rocks in there. Looking for fish swooping up off of those rock edges. Yeah, I'm just working the streamer trying to move it around structure, match it with current. Oh, oh we got a slow follower. Oh, he no eat it. Fish just chase it for about 10 feet. Dang it. Why he no eat? The visual aspect of streamer fishing. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't really get a whole lot better than watching fish fly at streamers, if we're being honest. Dang. Just working to keep the optimal distance. Oh, oh little looker there, too. <laughs> Almost looked like he had it in his mouth. They know, they're just, I mean, right now they're just kind of flashing at it, so I'll maybe speed up my strip a little bit because they're eating it a lot when I'm kind of killing it, so making it hard to get grabs. Big rocks like this, they'll surf that current pushback on the front of these rocks and see if you can get one to come out. And, that, oh. and then the downside of it, too, they're going to sit in that slower dead water. Sometimes you just got to talk to the fish, too. Right. <laughs> like, come on, baby. Come on. Just schmooze them a little bit. And we got another little gradient start to pick up. More pockets. I like these kind of quicker pockets. They give the fish a little less time to react it's kind of like you either want it or you don't usually leads to some pretty good pretty good eats all kinds of structure down here you can see if you look down river nice little rock sticking its nose up probably can go left of it but there's a other shallow little rock sitting right under the water surface so i'll probably go right and then kind of tuck back around yeah, I mean, as a streamer, fisherman right now, this is like dream water, you know, pick pick where you want to cast, essentially. Could be fishing just about all of it, so. Let's see if I can pick one up out of there. It's got to be trout. Come on. And we're going to tuck back in. Super surprising, no fish. Oh, there, there, there he is. As I say that. Why'd you throw that grounded uh, on there then? Uh, so I was pretty much out of the line, so I didn't really have much of a chance and he was chasing it and then he went at it. So I just got lucky and smirked him a little bit. I hope you guys enjoyed the latest installment of Reading Water. Uh, we did shoot this right after we shot the Scott Dixon one, before the Scott Dixon one went out. So, for all you guys who made comments about uh, putting a little, you know, more point of view video, maybe getting the drone a little closer, uh, we heard you, and you'll see those changes coming up. We just shot the cart video this morning, uh, and we're going to be shooting the Euronymph video later on in October. So, appreciate you guys tuning in. I believe Five Flies is up next week, uh, and then we have some an on the water series with Tanner, focusing on fall fishing, uh, and some cool stuff coming up with Lock and Co, and uh, some more tips and trick videos. So, as always, appreciate you guys' support. Feel free to like, subscribe, don't bell notification, all that YouTube magic stuff. So, yeah, have a good one. Bye bye. <laughs>